Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome on in to some South America playoff action right now. It is Not Today versus Midas Club Elite coming at you from Beyond the Summit 2. I am Carlo Guy, also known as Dakota Cox, and I'm going to be joined by my good buddy and best friend, Lacoste. Be did you just say best friend? I said best friend. Ah, all right. That's what I want to say about you. You're my the best uh, <laughs> BTS Summit friend. All right. I, I don't have any other friends than you. You have in no general, friends. Yeah. no friends here. No friends at all. I'm sorry, bro. Now look at this. We're in store for a bit of a treat today. We both had been working a lot of the American qualifiers, the American group stage, uh, but now we have made our way past that, and it's all to come down to playoff action. America playoffs are going to be beginning in about a half hour time, I believe, maybe I an think hour. So. But until then, we have some South America action going down. They've made their way through their group stage already. And we have ended up into these final four, which is Not Today, Midas Club Elite, uh, Infamous, and SG Esports. Uh, I don't know how much time you've had to be able to look over a lot of these South American teams, but I could tell you that if I was looking at this team list, like, this is pretty expected. Yeah, this is what uh, we expected. I had some time to check uh, the South American games, and uh, we casted some South American Dota before, right? Uh-huh. Uh, well, it's today, it's not today uh, Peru and uh, Midas from Brazil. Uh, not today, they are 8-1. to They only lost to SG Sports, but uh, they managed to beat them in a tiebreaker for the first place. So... Very very versatile team. They remind me of Bears from Europe, actually, the kind of play style they're playing. Uh, you can just ban all their heroes. I mean, these guys can play anything. I, I mean, literally everything. Nice. I like to hear that. Flexibility. And you mentioned it. I mean, it's it was almost similar to America where for between Not Today, SG Esports, and Infamous, it's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors between those three. Uh, and then Maya's Club Elite has kind of just etched themselves into the playoffs here. So I would imagine people are going to be favoring not today on this one. A lot of familiar names on this team. We have, of course, uh, the legendary Kotaro Hayama. Yeah. He's on my friends list. Did you know that? Really? Yeah. I'm cool. Maybe I'll add him right now. <laughs> uh, Stinger and Masoku, King Tekka, also, of course, very popular South American players here. We have one spot. Only one of these South American teams is going to be able to go off to Kiev and compete with some of the best in the world, and we have to find out who's it going to be. We'll know by the end of tomorrow, but look at this draft already. We've been seeing this son of a gun banned every game, but the greatest hero in the game, Keeper of the Light, find oh, his I way. Oh, I thought you were going to say Vengeful Spirit. No! Keeper, the greatest hero in the game. I've been saying it for how long now? And Yeah, it, 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 it is one of the strongest hero right now in this uh, current patch. Oh, yeah. Besides uh, Lone Druid, uh, Ember Spirit, and Centaur, of course. But we see uh, something fishy going on in Not Today, Slardar. They like to play, play their Slardar. Uh, from what I see, also very versatile team. Uh, their picks, uh, what they prior prioritize is usually... Uh, Terrorblade, uh, Underlord, uh, they like to have uh, Invoker and Panda combo. So this is the Alacrity plus Earth Panda combo, which is so deadly. We didn't see that for quite long be because it's kind of overpowered in my opinion. It uh, should be nerfed a little bit. I don't think I've seen any Panda uh, in America. It was funny because we did see that utilized not long ago. And it had like a nice little interesting cheesy strat to it, but... Moving on, second phase of bands. What would you wouldn't you know it? There it goes. Brewmaster banned out. Yeah, uh, I guess they did their homework. They know what they're good at. Uh, I mean, even without Invoker, uh, Midas still likes to play uh, that panda on an off lane. You say without Invoker? Yeah, even without Invoker. Yeah, they they still love to pick it. I don't feel like we've been seeing a lot of Invoker either in American games. You know, or yeah, am I crazy? Um, yeah. Exactly. Americas have a kind of different style. Uh, they love to play their um, Abaddon, which we oh, saw yeah. on offlane, which we saw as position four, which we saw as a carry. It's funny well. to even see these subtle differences just between South America and North American meta. This Coddle would have never made it in the draft if it was America. And then, you know, yeah, as you mentioned, where's the Abaddon? That would have been gobbled up right away. And uh, not today, obviously, showing more favor in a Warlock, which yeah. is not been seeing prioritized at all. Yeah, I've seen uh, Warlock in some games in China, some games in Europe. Warlock's still really strong and popular pick. Mm -hmm. uh, 
because of those fatal bonds, you can combine pretty much any Ooh. magical damage. Spooky. Undying comes out. The man with his tombstone, the dirge. They like to call him. That's such a dumb name. <laughs> Why <laughs> Why'd they think of that name? Like, Ice Frog's like, uh, zombie. I know a good name for him. <laughs> dirge. <laughs> yeah, someone who thought of that name probably got the raise. <laughs> Dirge. Uh, but, you know, wh why this game is undying? All I see from it is that they're looking to win lanes because yep. Venge and Keeper can hit a tombstone from a decent distance. But uh, is it just that? Is it just winning lanes? It's just having a, a good head start? Uh, from not today's perspective of what they want to do, probably Warlock going to be played as position 5 hero paired with uh, one more hero on a safe lane and undying plus Slardar probably a uh, dual lane on an off lane that's yeah. that's pretty strong and deadly if you start hitting the tombstone you're just gonna get crushed by slardar and uh, just buy some more time plus extra slow from zombies oh yeah the from upheaval dirge zombies dirge and the upheaval slow it's just oh, you can't yeah. move through anything and the zombies are hitting you that sounds like it could be a nightmare mobility might need to be considered here from midas being able to get in kill a tombstone let's say or at least get out if you get caught by so much slow so I wonder if they are going to uh, factor that in to their lineup at all or not. Yeah, with uh, this Venge, uh, I want to see what uh, what it's going to be played. If it's going to be a carry Venge or a position 4 Venge, slash 5. Yeah. Batrider. Haven't seen much Batrider over in America. Yeah, uh, but over here, it's, it's a pretty popular pick in South America, actually. Yeah. It's great. Uh, single target lockdown. Great initiation. A uh, good way to kind of, you know, penetrate into a base. A lot of teams can always feel a bit lackluster on having sieging capabilities, and Batrider can be there to kind of help out a bit, I guess. But I don't know. Batrider just feels like it's like we pick Batrider, so we're going to pick him. It doesn't feel <laughs> like Batrider in particular is amazing against this lineup. And now they pick up a Weaver, so it's like, oh, we already see your Batrider, so we'll just get a core who might naturally build into something like a Lincoln Sphere and... Have that deterrent for Batrider and be hard to just grab. Yeah, but look at uh, look at this. Uh, Weaver plus uh, Undying, sorry, Dirge. Uh, you have so much things to focus <laughs> on. You you need to kill the bugs. You need to kill the zombies. Just a lot of disgusting you, creatures you, you, here yeah, for not today. To hit a few times, like five, six times, just to hi kill all those uh, bugs and zombies. Fighting into not today right now it feels like you're fighting into an old school RPG. Like there's like <laughs> there's bug creatures, zombies, slardar bosses, yeah, and, then, and then the warlord like boss, war like uh, warlock. It's like <laughs> I don't know. It feels yeah. It feels like a, a, an RPG here. But look, look at that. Now the invoker comes out. Yeah, this bug, is fun. Bugs are like level one. You just go in yeah. like kick them, <laughs> splash. Yeah. Then the the zombies came out, and then it's the Overlord Warlock. He's like, I have been actually the I puppet master yeah, this whole time. Things, I summoned so. all these things. Uh, while well, it's while in this game, it's almost quite the opposite. The Warlock is the little shitter dude, and it's the <laughs> Weaver who's going to be the final boss. That's if not today, get their way. Um, what do you think about the Invoker grab? I mean, it's something we were talking about a bit before. You were mentioning a bit before how they typically like to tie together like Invoker with the alacrity power of the Brewmaster. Still feeling plausible. It could be a core Venge. You know, Venge with Alacrity's neato. But, I don't know. Maybe there could be something there a bit more juicy. Yeah, Invoker gives them a lot of control for all these heroes. Uh, plus, they have Keeper of the Light, Blinding Light, and uh, Lasso for Initiation. They have a, let's say, it, a good save, semi-good save. They don't have any heal, but they have a swap from Venge. If it's going to be a position... Uh, one Venge, carry Venge, uh, then it's not uh, not gonna be used defensively as much as it would be if it was uh, position 5 Venge, but we'll see from the last pick what they want to do. Yeah, I want to do a side note here. For anyone in Dota TV who didn't really hear much of us up until that point, uh, that is due to the, the Valve current like Dota bug. If I click outside of the Dota game, our mic mutes. Yeah. So if you're listening to Dota TV, go, go report that right now to... Valve. It's not my fault. It's theirs. Last two picks coming out here. Midas Club go right in for a Lycan. Another heavy push, heavy siege. You give that guy a Lacrity and he's going to do some work. The response from not today, what looks like potentially the Kotaro Hayama Storm, Storm Spirit. Spirit. Wow. Yeah, kind of ballsy to pick uh, Storm Spirit into these heroes. 
but uh, we'll see how that that's gonna work. On the other <laughs> hand, we have a Lycan. Uh, this is the hero I want to see more often, actually. I, I don't know why it's not picked that the hero is so strong. So this is where I feel like if they knew they were going to be building into this kind of push, this fast-paced, high-tempo lineup from Midas, I wouldn't mind seeing them creep in something like the, the Beastmaster over a Batrider. Then you get really to go yeah. all, like, all, all in. All in with auras, with yeah. uh, Invoker, uh, Forge Spirits, uh, Lycan, I guess Howl. You know, you can make the argument that if he committed for Beastmaster, maybe a liking would be kind of predictable at that point. But uh, I don't know. For now, I guess Batrider feels a bit more comfortable for Midas. Midas coming into this matchup, uh, kind of the underdog here. They managed to just creep their way into the playoffs while uh, Not Today came in at the top of their group stage here. This uh, Not Today group did have a bit of a shuffle period and were not eligible for the direct invite into the uh, group stage. They had to work their way also through the open qualifier. So, yeah. Well, uh, not today already beat uh, Midas once. Uh, your predictions? My predictions are... Hold on a moment here, my, my brother. I'm going to have to quickly just... Since we had to jump in the studio so fast, the settings were all incorrect for myself. Uh, I, uh, you know what's funny is I actually personally like the draft a bit better for Midas. I like their high tempo, I like their heavy push, and I feel like Not Today's is a, a bit more risky, but based on skill, I, I lead, I lead back towards Not Today again. You just stole what I wanted to say. Oh. It's the same exact thing. I mean, Not Today, <laughs> from my point of view, is a more experienced and better team. They already managed to beat them, and, it, and it's BO3, so my vote goes for not today. But uh, overall, I like uh, Midas lineup more because uh, of all these auras. Vengeance Aura, Howl, uh, you have uh, Invoker with Alacrity and uh, Forged Spirits. Uh, it's going to be really deadly if they manage uh, to survive through the early and mid game. And yeah. if they do well, I actually expect them to win at 30 minute mark, but uh, I'll go with not today. Now, let's say, you know, Not Today managed to squeeze their way through and even out of this qualifier and to Kiev. How yeah. do you think a team like Not Today would be able to match up against some of those other squads out there that are, you know, possibly creeping in? Like, you know, maybe a, a secret or <laughs> or maybe uh, a, a Team NP. Well, uh, Not Today, uh, it's easier to play as an underdog always. Like, you, you got nothing to lose. And uh, uh, there's a lot of teams who don't know much about you. I mean, you can watch the replays and and try to figure out how they play, but uh, it's uh, it's hard because they're not used to that play style. Yeah. Well, looks like we're going to get back into the game here. And away we go. After a little bit of a pause, we are underway. Good luck. Have fun, everybody. This is a best-of-three matchup as we move into playoffs here. All comes down to this. And uh, trying to refresh myself with a bit of the roster here. We got Nevermore, which, I again, I believe is Kotaro Hayama. These kids love to change up those name tags. <laughs> <laughs> Make it more confusing. Uh, playing the Storm Spirit nearby Zone. Never heard that name before. Playing the Slardar Stinger, a familiar face. He's going to be playing your Undying across the river. Uh, nearby, we have, of course, the opposing Lycan, who's going to be uh, Midas's... Fucking eh. How do you feel about that name? <laughs> I, I love it. I just <laughs> eh. It's, eh. Eh. Fucking eh. eh. I'll take your base. Fucking eh. <laughs> Seuss on your uh, invoker. Going to be repping the mid lane here for Midas up and above. Bardo on the greatest hero in the game. Nearby. Try to spell that name. Theo. Theo Leo. Theo Leo Leo Core? Mm, Theo Leo Core? Theo Leo Core. That sounds a bit more sexy. Vengeful Spirit. So I like what they're doing with the uh, Keeper of the Light. A lot of people are always skeptic about the laning phase support of a Coddle, especially when you're rolling them into the safe lane. You're blasting down waves, taking farm away from your safe laner. But, you know, more teams are running them like this into a dual off lane position where it's like, hey, your off laner is going to get bullied out of the lane anyways. Why not just blast that safe laner back a bit, mess with the creep waves on the side, and, and just be an... An old man pervert, you know? Yeah, look at Dirge. He, he used <laughs> Decay on uh, two heroes which you don't want to happen. And now just hit TP bottom just to bully that uh, fucking eh. <laughs> <laughs> he is getting pushed back pretty hard here. Hunter, Stinger, happy to get right in his face. And we're going to have uh, 
a, a classic 3v2 matchup. Looks like Bardo's also made the rotation over, and he's going to welcome everybody with a nice little blast. Oh, now, now we just saw why he's the greatest hero in the game. Yep, yep. One little skill like that, and suddenly he has made his presence known. You don't want to get hit by double decay. This is the thing when you're playing against the dirge. Like, just you need to spread out. This is look at his strength right now. It's high. It's plus twelve. Is he got that bristleback factor where you might want to consider just getting even a, a magic wand a bit early, or uh, do you think it's not that spam worthy? Well, you need to get uh, against double heroes if you're double laning, especially three versus three. It's always good to have at least stick. Yeah, uh, because it can change the the fight. Ooh, top lane. Batrider able to just make it out from what was looking like a bit of a precarious situation there. He actually just heads right back to the shrine and will shower on up and get his health right back. Yeah, mid lane, uh, we see Invoker playing uh, Exhort. Invoker. Ooh, one more hit should do it. Oh, oh, but he got that salve off and will barely be able to live. Oh, Soothes yeah. with nah. a smooth play. The Shrine is ready. He's going back to Shrine to heal up. Storm pretty much going to do the same thing. Uh, so they're going to be back. Oh, bottom lane. Okay, like it. Under the tower. They need one more hit. Oh, they get it done. Downside to Coddle lane support is like you have no defensive capabilities. You're being chased down. Your safe laner is being chased down. You just have to sit there and watch it happen pretty much. What if, what if he has like a spell jump on my horse? My <laughs> horse is amazing. <laughs> they ride off into the light together. Yeah, yeah, I think that'd be a bit OP. For now, though, it looks like our Lycan has returned. And they're going to have to get back into the grindstone. That was just our first blood, and it is going to be not today who do strike first. This is already working out very nicely for them. They are... Just making things very frustrating for the Lycan. The blast will fly out. It just barely nips zone, but look at the sustain. And uh, it's, uh, you know, we're seeing the Weaver bulk up in the CS quite a bit from this. Just so much attention being drived away. Yeah. The bottom lane, the tri lane for uh, Midas is not that strong, actually. With Lycan, uh, they don't have much kill potential. I mean, Lycan has boots. He can try to hit people and, and that's it. Venge, uh, low level, not not def effective early on. The stun lasts only 1.2 seconds, so... Plus, you have two tanky heroes, Undying and Slardar. Both have uh, magic stick, so it's hard to take them down. Oh, battle of the mid laners here. They're gonna go. Who's gonna win? First the cold snap, a couple of right clicks, then the pull, but both will still walk away, just barely alive. Yeah, where's Storm Spirit bottle? It's, it's coming. There it is. He's got it now. He'll fall on up. Very close one there. Still the Weaver. Up and above air. That's Storm 20 and 4. Invoker 15. In terms of CS. And now things are going to balance out in the bottom lane. But not today. On the prowl here. They have spotted a support Vengeful Spirit. They will knock her with the Decay and the Crush. One more right click. She's trying to maybe juke him between the Shrine. The Blast will be dodged, and they'll finish her off. It's going to be enough. The Shrine was on cooldown on, on, on top lane. Oh, a deep dive for Batrider, and Ooh, he Shikuchi will be was able ready. to make it away. Shikuchi was ready. He just needed to be close to use it. Fortunately, uh, those tricky little trees... You know what? I think uh, the guy who invented the name Dirge, he also invented the name Shukuchi. Sukuchi? Sukuchi? Is it Japanese? I don't know. It's it's Bug Latin. B bottom lane. The return of the Dirge. And with that, the Crush should be good enough to get the finish on Lycan. They heat a huge blast there. Bardo is not going to be able to get the finish. And this Lycan goes down for the second time. Mid lane. Cold snap onto the storm. A nice gank from behind as the Vengeful Spirit knocks him with a missile. Oh. Masoku shows up, but it's a bit too late if he wanted to have some assistance there for Kataro. Yeah, well, Kitty in mid wanted to help a bit too late. He's level 3 right now on Warlock. Uh, gonna get some XP there while he's dead. Always nice when your mid laner dies, so you can get some XP on that support. Top lane. It's a very feisty one as the bugs continue to chew away at the Bat Rider. Weaver gets it dumb. SQM assistant getting not today up now four to one here. Yeah, SQM uh, free farming on top has that uh, magic stick, which is a must have against the Bat Rider. Has a Blightstone for some extra armor reduction. Pretty much free farming, uh, sitting on 1.5k gold. I wonder what he's gonna buy. 
I don't know, but he might not even consider departing from that lane. He almost works as a nice insurance policy for not today in this game. I mean, they could four-man here soon, uh, you know, as Kataro's levels continue to trickle in on his Storm Spirit. They could start working around and getting a lot done and just pulling and creating space away from that Weaver. Yeah, Batrider has some double stacks in jungle. He's just got the Bounty Rune, gonna Ooh. farm that. Which is gonna be some huge uh, boost in gold for him. Straight to Blink Dagger, you think, for the bat? Yeah, he must go. He's already kind of playing from behind. Uh, has a bottle. I expect 11, 12 minute Blink Dagger from him. Wow, this uh, Slardar just turned level 6. That was the off lane, dual lane, you know, undying Slardar. Oh, he does die though! Like, just cursed him. I was going to say how things were going fire so nice. ready. <laughs> I don't know if that would have been good enough. I good think setup it right would. There. Ooh, mid lane, just after participating in that bottom lane trade. Seuss now getting approached from Kataro here, but Batrider swarms in and does force him back. Yeah, it's a double damage storm. Uh, he maxed uh, Overload, um, but couldn't get a kill there. Batrider showed up. I'm surprised Batrider didn't uh, try to catch him because Storm Spirit had 150 mana and two stacks already. Yeah, decided not to follow up with it. And he'll finally step away from that mid lane as attention goes to the bottom. Rolling in is going to be zoned, but doesn't find an opportunity to connect with the crush. So oh. back to the lane they go. Meanwhile, mid lane, they finally find that opening. Batrider returns, looking to go for redemption here on the storm. And will be able to get it, but hey, Kotaro was able to creep in there and finally get that grab on the invoker. Yeah, almost 500 gold for that Batrider. He was only missing 1k for Blink Dagger. Meanwhile, uh, Venge, where does she get gold from? Where did she, she has get gold from? Yeah, oh. she almost has enough gold for uh, energy booster plus boots and stick. Uh, bounty farming, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Running around picking up uh, loose ends of gold and maybe an occasional jungle camp, but now she is waiting, almost kind of baiting a dive onto the Lycan and decides to go in there to assist, but look who's also coming in from behind. It's going to be Hunter here. They're looking to swarm in for the Lycan. They get the crush just after the shapeshift. They try to block him in, but he eats the tree and then jumping in from the north. It's going to be Kataro. Catches him. Very nice. Yeah, one level in Electric Vortex. So usually we, we see people having a static remnant, at least level 2, and they're skipping uh, Electric Vortex, but uh, this is was worth it, actually. This will allow them to also segue into the Tier 1 takedown. More money in the bank for not today. Oh, the greatest hero in the game. Yeah. Getting dived on top. Uh-oh. Watch out, Coddle! Oh, he's bad with bugs. Yeah, they done for for sure. Weaver is a nightmare to deal with, and there's not much you could do unless you were, you know, ultied and had a blinding light maybe, but look at this. Doesn't stop. Bottom lane, they keep jumping forward, and they're going to also get the takedown on the Batrider. It goes from bad to worse. Sunstrike. Dodges also it. not going to get the catch. Nice oh. sidestep there from zone. Yeah, interesting build uh, from Dirge. Uh, he's 2-2 two -two and is saving up a point. Uh, usually what we see is people try to max Tombstone, which in my opinion is the best one. You, because after like the laning phase, you have a problem with getting levels with uh, Undying if there's not much fights going on and you're not winning those fights. So you need to start leveling Tombstone right now. It's because it's not that effective in uh, late game. Yeah. Ooh, Bardo has been spotted. The lone man is just trying to get out there and get a ward down. So there'll be at least a little bit of intel here for Midas to see where the approach is coming. Not today, though, very aggressive. These are not, you know, slow-paced, methodical kind of uh, teams here. They they are like those kind of teams that when they smell blood in the water, they, they go. Yeah, Warlock, uh, almost level 6. He is missing few experience just to get it. L has level 3 fatal bonds. Uh, I guess when he hits level 6, they want to fight. Get the rock. The Dwayne Johnson dropping. Yeah, look at Slarder. Slarder is so fucking farmed. Like, he's missing 200 gold for Blink Dagger at 10 minutes. Yeah, this, this is going to be It huge. could be game-ending like momentum if they get a lot with that Blink Dagger. Yeah, exactly. You'd have to wait if you're Midas right now until Bat Blink Dagger to hope to kind of make a good comeback. But even at that point, there's a world where Bat blinks in. He's like really the, the only decent initiation for his team. You can't really bank on a long range swap anytime soon. He just runs in and tries to go for any lasso. Masoka could just be, where they be there with the rock. This is not an easy game for Midas at all. Yeah, uh, 
they just got his blink dagger a bit uh, sloppy played the courier just he was standing on mid and the courier just delivered it to him so they know he has a blink dagger mid lane jump in Kotaro looking to go for the pullback here on the sooths can he get it done yes they can quick hit and run job onto the invoker here and it doesn't stop yet rotating over from the top lane is going to be sqm looking to go for venge gets it done Killing spree for your Weaver, not today. Clear out another two and look to push in a tier one tower. This one is going pretty fast. It's going to be more pressure on Midas to shift this ridiculous momentum train. Yeah, do they want to defend this tower? The glyph is popped. Uh, yeah, they will. Best hero in the game yep. from the high ground. Oh, Imagine yeah. how, how strong that is. Yep. This is great. Levels up priority this is best. into. This is not great. This is the, the best. best. Yeah. yeah, he puts all into illuminate, all into chakra magic. Just long range defensive abilities here. Oh, look at this! Moving on forward, the Bat Rider. I don't know if he's looking to get close enough here for any sort of lasso play, but here comes reinforcements from not today. Zone has a blink dagger, and he's looking for someone. He gets the crush connection only on the Venge, but he's looking to move on forward as Kataro cleans up what he started. He gets the Big finish heel. onto Venge. Now they move in for Sooths. But he has ghost walked away, still not today, commanding and bullying onto Minus. They don't even care that the Lycan is somewhere else in the world pushing. They just want to get kills. Moving in, the Coddle's got to go. Somehow, some way, they even take down their greatest hero. Yeah, in the probably game. a bug. I don't probably know a how. bug. I think, yeah. yeah. Regardless, they finally move back and put their eyes on the prize. You know, you know what's weird? I was uh, talking about the uh, Batrider's Blink Dagger. He had uh, the same amount of gold at the uh, 7 minute mark. Now it's 13 minutes and he has uh, the same amount of gold. And he only died twice. Yeah, Bat, get back on the grindstone here. He's working on it now, but that Blink Dagger is certainly required here. Just as Lycan was trying to maybe get some split pressure, maybe take a tier 1 himself, uh, Slardar heads up that way, and Lycan's going to have to take his business just elsewhere. He's still trying to even finish out uh, an armlet. Yeah, Is that a normal build for Lycan? We, I, I Did he misclick that shrine too? <laughs> 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 so, uh, well, whoops, uh, fuck it, eh? We didn't see much of uh, Lycan in competitive play. We saw Matumbaman playing it, and I don't see anyone else uh, picked Lycan. I mean, the hero is viable, but I think you need uh, uh, Max Howl instead of uh, Feral Impulse. He has a unique idea about Lycan in Yeah, Dota. but during the night, it's easy to fight with. You get uh, 400 HP bonus for heroes. It doesn't last that long. It only lasts, uh, what is it, uh, 13 seconds. But it's still a lot. Especially if you're not participating yeah. in a fight. That's a fight. Yeah. 13 seconds is totally a fight. Okay, Goddle getting a position, but look at this. Nice setup, nice spot out here from Zone, and they just quickly execute the Invoker. He was just parked on the sidelines hoping for maybe a defense, but... Yeah, Zone has been all over the place with his Blink Dagger. His 2-1 uh, and 8, the score tells you how good he's playing, actually. You don't need to even watch the game. You know, he's in 8, 10 out of 13 kills. We're trying to be better at maths. Right? I mean, you're helping. Yeah. Not today, just, you know, this is all big benefactor from the nice laning setup where they were adding that extra pressure onto Lycan, but that's something they should have expected. With the Dirge draft, you know, you're, you mean, even I was able to call it. The only thing that made it obvious for that pickup was that they were hoping to just take advantage in the lanes, hoping to pressure that safe laner. They committed with a last pick onto the Lycan. They should have known what they were going to be possibly getting themselves into, and well, they did try to adjust. They rolled the call to the bottom lane, but, you know, Venge and Coddle, I don't think that's enough to stop a Slardar yeah. and a Dirge, dude. <laughs> so it's just tough. It's a tough lane. Might just have to, like, somehow survive, somehow hold out, which Coddle's great at, but I don't know. Lycan's also a hero where you're hoping to always be, like, you know, ahead. Oh, Invoker, he's going to die again. hey -o! Yes, Storm Spirit completed his uh, Bloodstone, even got that extra charge from the Q. And look at the aggressive ward on bottom lane behind the tower. They, they, this, this is gonna be a massacre if they don't know about it and they try to fight them. Oh, Coddle just tries to blast the mid lane, but not even that is safe. Another wonderful setup from Zone. Yeah, undying, uh, Glimmer Cape finished, level eight. 
Gonna have a level 3 tombstone right now. This game's looking pretty good for not today. They're even like itemizing like kind of appropriately, like safely, I'd say. You know, Lincoln's is being picked up onto the Weaver. It's not like he's rushing a Deso with the advantage they've already pulled together. It's not like these supports are just going to bull rush into a Midas knowing that things are going so good. You know, they're getting their Glimmers, they're getting their Lincolns, you know. they. This is important. It's an important match. Yep. Best of three. They're looking to lead in with a good game one win. Yeah, uh, Coral and Venge not having the greatest time of their lives in this game. Uh, plus, now with Glimmer Cape is finished on Undying, they need to buy Sentries and Dust, and they're gonna be so much poorer than that. Actually, uh, right now, so... Level 7 Venge and Caudal level 6 at 17 minutes. I hope they have a... I can't tell if like a Tome is available, but I hope they're, I hope they're picking them up. Gotta get your reading in. Uh-oh. Smoked up. Zone Slardar. Rushing up towards the top lane, and he quickly spots out two, and he crushes both of them. But he's still outnumbered here. Finally jumping in is going to be Kotaro looking to kind of pick up the pieces there. They've already made their move for zone, though, and they will be able to chop him down. Kotaro gets the finish, but then the rest of the Not Today army shows up and drops down the rock, and it does utter destruction. Three are going to be going down for Midas there. Savage. Double kill. Wrecked. Brutal. This was just amazing <laughs> performance by Not Today. The, this was the first rock actually dropped at uh, 17 minutes, even though he had it uh, at minute 10. And they even devoured the, the ward on top. Warlock being level 10 right now. 20% XP gain picked up. I hope he goes for Midas. I just love Warlock with Midas. I don't even... Even if he went for a Midas, like... I don't even know if this game's going to last long enough for him to get something after it. <laughs> at oh. the rate it's going, it's it's a... It's very troublesome for, for Midas here, and they're just trying to creep their way somewhere outside the base to pick up scraps of farm. Yeah, what he can do, he can also go for uh, mech, and they just can try to finish the game from that. They have so much advantage right now. Yeah. All right. Smoke. Roche is down. Age is picked up and into the pocket of Kotaro, and they smoke up, and they're looking to go for the nail in the coffin, they say. 17 charges on Bloodstone, on Storm Spirit, and they're rotating bottom. They have a vision on them. Yeah. They want to just take the tier 2 mid tower. Go zone. He's thinking about jumping in here. Bardo. Not even ulti yet available on this Keeper of the Light, so no blinding light, which is a, a big, nice tool, the defensive tool to have, but here comes the Blast. The Wolves trying their best to help out. A slow sieging process here. While on the other side of the globe, it's Batrider trying to yeah. pressure other lanes. Caudal uh, locked Shadow Amulet. He doesn't want to make a Glimmer Cape yet. That's kind of fun. He can charge up his Blast yeah. and Shadow Amulet just so he could, thinks he's safe. But, you know, what's to stop him from just jumping and crushing that spy? Oh, Batrider on bottom has a haste. Can he do it? Storm hey. Spirit. He has enough mana. Or no. not. Doesn't go for it here. Recall will be there. Batrider going to get pulled back to the arms of Bardo. As not today are coming in. There we go. Move in. Lasso grab. Pull back for zone. They hit him with a stun. They hit him with the whole kit and caboodle of the invoker. And that's going to be able to get the finish. Two go down. Midas is like first promising fight of this game. Gets him two. Yeah, they saw Storm Spirit tipping bottom. Really nice rotation uh, there from uh, Batrider. His haste was uh, running out, so he tipped bottom, blinked in, and dragged uh, Slardar deep into his allied space. And uh, Dirge also paid with his life. It's a good little boost for Midas, but they are certainly going to need a lot more. Oh, yeah, Bardo. Very thankful he has that Shadow Amulet. Gets away from the Weaver on that one. Meanwhile, Kataro rushing around trying to find out where the Lycan is, but they've spotted him. He tried to go for the TP, but they pull him back in. And it looks like his days are numbered. Yeah, we didn't see m much of Lycan. I mean, Lycan... 1, 4, and 3 with the Armlet Echo Saber build. It's a lot of hard-hitting right-click damage, but... You know, how are you going to get hold of a Weaver who's sukuching around and getting away from you? How are you going to get hold of a Storm Spirit who's jumping around and away from you? Slardar with the maximum move speed. Yeah. It's hard to hit those heroes. You need someone to actually stun them. Venge stun not yeah. that long. You know, you're hoping that Bat maybe will lasso up one person, pull them back in, and he'll be able to go to town on at least that one person. But 
At this point in the game, that's not going to nearly be enough. They're trying their best, though. Bardo blasting out the wave. Storm thinks about jumping in for him, but doesn't want to be going too deep. The Siege is on for the Tier 3s. Tombstone goes down, and Invoker wants to move in and get a piece of it, but he actually eats a lot of damage moving in a bit too close. Oh, backdoor protection. They want it, though. SQM will be able to burn it down with that new Desolator. Tier 3 is dropped. If, wa if they want to, not today could just simply step back and maybe get that Shrine for some easy free extra money. But I don't know if they're hoping to go for the finish. They want to fight. Uh, Storm Spirit still has Aegis on, yeah. 3k gold on him. Will he just go in for a dive ball play to get the rest of this Aegis out? We'll see. Thinking about it yet, dodging out the blasts. Coddle doing his damnedest to blast out any waves who are moving forward, but they're able to get at least the range racks down. Now they're looking to go in for the melee. Team Mind has got to do something. You need to do something. You can't just uh, rely on Coral's Blast. They have the Batrider Blink Lasso here, but... You know. they, they can't go on Storm. They can't okay, go on... Okay, pop oh. Lincolns. They popped the Lincolns, and now they're going to look to go for the finish, but the Rock was there. Coming up from the Warlock just shuts him down. Batrider going to be taken out. Now Kartaro looking to move in. Trying to finish off the Invoker. He will lose his Aegis, but they will be able to clean it up. Now Lycan moves in, gets the quick finish on the Weaver, and then they'll jump right back and go for the Racks, it looks like here. Mandalik, though... Can be a real problem for the Storm. He's going to jump his way through it, though, and they're going to be able to make it out. At the end of the day, they managed to get their racks. It cost them their Weaver, but not today we'll get what they wanted. Yeah, and two buybacks. So Venge and uh, Invoker bought back. This seems not good for Team Midas. Lycan going for Basher. He needs to keep people in place. There was a good initiation on that... Um, uh, Weaver, whose Lincolns was popped, but uh, Storm Spirit had an Aegis, plus uh, there was a good rock, four man fatal bonds, bugs, and zombies. It's, yeah. uh, it's so much to focus on in the fights for uh, Team Midas. Alright, Midas, we'll see. It looks like they may smoke up here. Looking to go for an outside the base play. Probably necessary if they want to shift things in this game. Can they catch Not Today by Surprise here? An early blast to fly out. The Wolves kind of scouting. Batrider's hoping that someone overextends a bit. Ooh, he saw zone but didn't commit in for it. Decides to pull back. It's a very touchy situation for Midas. They have to just hope that all the stars align for this. Oh, look at zone. This guy is like a linebacker. Just moves in and goes for the confident stun. It looks like it will cost him his life. But yeah. Kotaro's here now, looking to hope and get some redemption here. Jumping on forward, it costs him one each, then blasting down. Oh no! Bardo! He manages to avoid the extra damage with the Shadow Amulet. Can't do it again, though. <laughs> a lot of kiting with that Shadow that Amulet. Is, that, <laughs> I've never seen so much value out of a freaking Amulet for a Coddle. <coughs> Whatever it may be, though, it looks like he does end up going down. It costs him just one on not today, but are they good enough with just taking down two and trying to make this push happen? Yeah, we'll first see. he saved Venge for some time, and then he almost lived with it. <laughs> uh, Storm Spirit, 22 charges, plus Orchid finished. Yeah, when he decides to go for Lincoln Sphere, it's gonna be pretty impossible to kill him. Here comes Not Today, now towards the mid lane, looking to go for their second set of racks. Tier 3 is beginning to get pressured, and we look to Midas to see what they want to do to stop him here. Last on cooldown, 10 seconds. Rook gonna be available in five. Uh, he just smoked in the back. Aghanim oh, Scepter yeah. ready on Warlock. Oh, this is this could be game finishing here with a big rock play. Hiding him in those back lines. Batrider may be looking to jump in, but he could be baited into a bad spot. That's when they're gonna go. One rock to come down and two golems to pop out. Not today, swarm into the action there, and quickly the bat will go down, the Venge will as well. Like it's caught in the mix under the upheaval, and they just can't stand a chance. They just begin to crumble apart. Sue's trying to hide back inside the base, but Not Today came in a swing, and, and I think they made connection onto the jawline here. Yeah, Lycan buys back. Lycan's Bye. back, but gets pulled right away. Without any sort of real defense, he goes in, trying to get some right clicks off, but just gets quickly swarmed. It's a dieback from Lycan. Invoker finished his Aghanims, but they're still taking those uh, Raxes down. This is looking pretty good for Not Today in this game number one of a best of three playoff action.
Storm Spirit, 27 charges, double rocks hitting the tier 3 tower. I mean, how much of this has all transpired from just that laning stage and that laning setup? Yeah, they, that's why they picked Dirge. Dirge, Dirge. Dirge. Uh, it's hard, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, the, the Keeper of the Light and Venge plus uh, Lycan, that's really not a strong uh, tri lane. I mean, you can beat it with a uh, good double lane, which we actually saw. Yeah, just a bit of a questionable draft in terms of how you wanted to lane things. I, I get how there's a bit of synergy between Midas' lineup. It's cute, you know? This, it, you know, things went how they were expecting. This Lycan could have been the biggest, baddest wolf on the block for sure. Don't get me wrong. You know, yeah. you got the benefit of Avenge with you. You got the alacrity going, but you know, not today. Just kind of thought about all steps of the game, and just got a good head start. Now here they are reaping in all the benefits. They got the first shrine down, and it looks like they might just c cross country this all the way to the other shrine and take that too. And uh, I haven't had much of a chance to look at the gold graph yet, but I imagine it's going to be quite frightening here. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Almost 30k of a dip. Yeah, they, they are smoked. They just used the uh, scan. They know where they are. It's uh, go hard or go home for them. Here we go. We might be able to at least get a dirge for their troubles. But let's see if not today still want to make a fight happen. The buyback's there. Dirge wants to get back into the fight and play. Meanwhile, deeper in... It's going to be a grab there from Kotaro, getting and finishing off the Lycan, who's also going to be out one more time. No buyback for him. Bardo, Glimmer Cape, and a TP out will get him to survive, but it soothes who's still outside the base. Yo, boys, you need the gem. They're running away with those uh, Glimmer Capes. <laughs> yeah, uh, right? And uh, Ghost Walk from Invoker. They're like, no, we have amp damage. That's, that's fine. That's enough. That's enough, but <laughs> they're not amping anybody. <laughs> Final racks. Minus not looking to throw in the towel just yet. Even though they don't really have a whole lot to offer here as far as defense, a simple EMP. A tornado, please stop hurting our base. Weaver with a butterfly hitting the Raxus. GG is called. All right, so not today. Pretty commanding first game, 32 to 10. A wonderful laning stage, a wonderful snowball. And uh, they're gonna be feeling pretty damn good moving into game two. Yeah, exactly. Not that they, uh, for Midas's perspective, uh, they're kind of outpicked, uh, outsmarted in the laning phase, which caused them the, to lose the mid game as well. I'm surprised that uh, Invoker went for Exord build instead of uh, Quaswex against that storm. Yeah. I mean, there was no. You can get a solo kill on him, uh, but there's not not much rotation with uh, Keeper of the Light or Venge. I mean, Venge could come. But uh, she needed to be bottom to actually try to get like on some farm because the lane was already lost. Well, things looking pretty good for Not Today coming out of the gate right now. And we'll be cutting to a small break. But when we do return, it's going to be more South America playoff action as it is Midas versus Not Today. That's Lacoste. I'm Cottle Guy, and we'll see you soon for more Dota. See you guys soon.